And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where second nature skill collided at times with human nature focus. But in the end, it was skill and the Rangers who won out. 6-2 the final over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Inside our Delta MSG studios, hi everyone, alongside Steve Valiquette, I'm John Giannone. This was going to be one of those games, now that we're in single digits of regular season games remaining, where the Rangers can start to formulate what they want to look like as a playoff team. Yeah. Six different Rangers scored, nine, uh, 12 different Rangers had a point, but nobody looked more playoff ready than number 31 in goal. Yeah, I agree. It's my favorite topic. John, just talking goaltending, and I'll tell you what, when it looks silent, when it looks silent, it's ready. And that's what Igor is right now. He's silent, or he can be loud when he wants to be with his glove. And he's getting the crowd behind him, and he's starting on time. He's got three huge saves here to start the game, and this is a different game if Igor's not ready at puck drop. This is some nights in the playoffs what it's going to look like where you need your goalie to keep you in it, to give you a chance. And Igor does that in a game that had a lot of offense, John. I'm going to be shocked if we're not at double-digit high-danger chances. Here's the glove save on Fix Walensky. Look at the face on the guy. <laughs> he's just devastated. It's like he took his heart. But Igor, when he's flashing the glove like this, he's having a lot of fun. And the Columbus Blue Jackets did their best to get under his skin. But at the end of the night, it's another game where you can say he's built up his season. As of March 9th, this was the game in Montreal that we talked about his turnaround beginning. Minimum 150 chances faced. Igor has an expected goals based on the difficulty that he's faced of 20. He's given up 13. That's best in the NHL. He's back on that pace that he was on all of last year, very consistently, and that Vesna pace that carried him through the playoffs last year with that attitude. He's got it back. He's, the crowd loves this guy, mm -hmm. and he knows it, and that's why he plays it up, and he adds a little extra flair on the glove save. But I think this is a really good thing because when your starting goalie loves to play at home, that can steal you playoff games because of the emotion that he rides on. And I mean it, his game is silent and side to side, explosive, but when he wants to go out there and have fun, it's a license to have fun the way that he's flashing his leather. And he saw 3 nothing become 3-2, but then the Rangers responded 6-2 the final over the Columbus Blue Jackets on a night where the Rangers are probably most proud that they get points number 97 and 98 on the season. And that is going to be a topic of discussion both here on the postgame show and throughout the next 48 hours as Rangers get ready for Devils in Jersey on Thursday. Winner, second place for the moment in the Metro Division. Uh, we talked in the pregame show, Steve, about this is also the time where the Rangers want to make sure that they solidify and start to synchronize their four forward lines. Yeah. And we saw three different lines scored in tonight's game. Mika Zibanejad's line, the top line, the line that's going to get so much ice time and attention in hockey's second season, yeah. really step forward tonight. Yeah, and you know what? Don't get discouraged if the Rangers do down the stretch here. Swap Kreider with Panarin again. These things are going to happen in the playoffs. You're not always going to be healthy. Tonight was a good step forward for the Zibanejad line by identity. And you know what? They had some east to west play in this game, but it wasn't the primary focus. I thought they did a pretty good job of managing the puck when they had to in moments of the game that they had to. Tarasenko knows how to play heavy, and he's such a compliment to this line with the way that he can hold onto the puck manage it and then know how to distribute it. I like the way this guy plays hockey and it seems like me watching him, the longer I watch and Zibanejad draws a penalty here just by doing the right thing, you understand that the line has a theme that can play an East to West Express, but they can also play the game when you have to handle on the puck and you have to be able to control the play, possess it, and then wait for an opportunity as Panarin scores on the power play. I think this line right now, John, they just have to understand that they can't turn the puck over at the offensive blue line. That's where Panarin has to be his best. Zibanejad scores on a one-timer where Panarin is dead slot and has everybody fooled. I, I, I just feel like they have the understanding. They just have to execute it, even when there's a pull in games like this that are wide open. Because it's easy to play against Columbus. 
but you've got to take care of your habits. And I'll go back to what Kane was saying after practice yesterday, which is you can't flick the switch when playoffs begins. We have to be careful of our habits going in. And, and everybody knows what that means, but it's very difficult to have the discipline in the game when you want to get points. These guys, yeah. they want to get points. They want to get assists. They want to, some guys are close in goal marks and milestones. They want to get round numbers, you know, and the goalie, he loses his safe yeah. percentage if the guys don't behave well, so it's a Speak, tough one. Speaking of which, Mika Zibanejad had a career-high 81 points last year. He gets to 81 points again tonight with a goal and an assist, and he joins some rarefied air. In the last quarter century, the only four Rangers who have had consecutive 80-point seasons are Mika, Artemi Panarin, his left wing, Yaramir Yager, and Wayne Gretzky. So surely in the last eight games, Mika Zibanejad will set a career high in points as he now has 81. Artemi Panarin leads the team with 83. We also talked about how last year's playoff renaissance, yeah. discovery of the line of Hedl, Lafreniere, and Kako uh, was so effective for the Rangers as the playoffs continued and how they've wanted since they've been back together to rediscover that. Yeah. They certainly did in Florida. They opened the scoring tonight. Yeah, and I hope they know how important they are because in the playoffs there's a very good chance the top six will neutralize each other in a long series and it happens to be the third line that's the pivotal line, the differentiator in a playoff series. They're playing that way right now. They're playing that way with energy and intent and they're not afraid to get to the middle of the ice. For a younger group of three, these guys have all the experience they need now to know that they can dominate. That's what I see from these guys. John, at five on five this season, they have 27 goals, and the opponent only has 17. So they can do it, and they're gonna see lesser competition. They're gonna be able to have the softer matchups. They should be able to dominate, and that should be the reason why the Rangers can beat anybody in the playoffs this year. This is as deep as they've ever been, and they're making plays like this now. Hedl's goal, it reminds me a lot of Kako's the other night. A lot of the play starts in their own zone where four guys lean in, and you can see Fox at the top of the screen join the rush because he knows he can add value with these three guys on the ice. It's not hang back and play D, you can go for it. Fox hits the crossbar in the post there on that play. Miller's able to keep it alive. Fox now makes his fourth good play of this shift and it ends up on Lafreniere's stick and it's back to Miller as he routes over that face-off dot right there. And that's the key because you've got Hedl and Kako at the net. When Miller delivers the puck, you've got so much pressure there. And this really does remind me of Kako's goal in Florida. It's being next, it's being that third guy and oftentimes when you see rebound goals scored in hockey, you'll see it's the guy that's off the pile or off the weak side post. And the intent was there. They're, they're surrounding it. They're on it. And when you're on the puck like that, good things are going to come of it. And now it's becoming habit, and they know it works, yeah. right? So they're all bought into it. It's a great look. Yeah, and a great look at the teamwork that was involved in that goal produced by our film room, sponsored by CDW and HP. We've got plenty more to come on the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where Igor Shosturkin stopped 28 shots for his 34th win and was first star of a 6-2 Rangers win over the Columbus Blue Jackets.